the second largest hotel in the world. And I have worked with uh, market research companies such as Nielsen and uh, advertising agencies. So the question is, what am I doing now in uh, uh, the cruise industry, tourism and the cruise industry? And uh, well, several reasons for that. One is just that at the end of your career, you may choose what you think is more fun. Uh, and uh, after more than 25 years of holding the chair, that's what I say, the master of the hierarchy. I'm not going to work into uh, the theoretical levels as the previous presentation did. Uh, I just will remind you that maybe that 30 years ago, more than 30 years ago, uh, the American Marketing Association uh, decided that uh, uh, subject of how many P's you could have actually in marketing uh, was open. And Philip Cutler proposed that you had two more P's, so that made six. And there was a big discussion in the general marketing that lasted for uh, seven months before the American Marketing Association rejected the idea that you had more than four P's. Uh, so that's another question. Anyway, um, the um, theme cruises. Uh, there are two words there. One is theme, and the other one is cruises. Now, the cruise industry is a very special industry in the sense that uh, customers' of choice is much more uh, important than what you can have in uh, many other um, type of industries. The second thing is that it's an oligopoly. It's, it's a highly structured industry, 30, 350 meters long. They cost uh, several hundred million dollars, uh, more than 500 million dollars for the newest ones. Uh, the largest ones coming on the market now uh, have a capacity, passenger capacity of something like 4,000 passengers. And uh, they uh, have something like 6,000 people on board. So those are small towns, actually. Uh, also, if you look at the balance sheets of those uh, companies in the cruise industry, uh, you will see that uh, actually the uh, uh, amount of uh, assets that you have is enormous. Uh, you also will see that uh, uh, it is uh, something which, uh, of course, you cannot duplicate as such because uh, of the money involved and also because of the um, technical aspects associated with that industry. Now, uh, it doesn't mean that uh, smaller um, cruise companies cannot exist on the market. Uh, and those smaller cruise companies that exist on the market have chosen to uh, be on uh, different segments. And so one of the questions is, uh, when we talk about themed cruises, are we talking about segments? Are we talking, what are we talking about? And uh, well, just to give you an example of what segments could be, uh, some of the uh, successful smaller companies uh, have decided or have chosen to be in the uh, sailing Cruises, I mean, say ships. Uh, I can mention two of them. One is uh, Star Keepers, the other one is Sea Clouds. Those have only sailing ships, three mast, four mast, five mast sailing ships. And people who want to be on a sailing ship, very obviously, are not the same kind of people as people who want to be on a 6,000 uh, people uh, vessel uh, cruising the Caribbean. So uh, we uh, segmentation, what the industry is, and we also say it makes people mad. So uh, yield management, which uh, is uh, the most uh, important uh, pricing question today, uh, is not the same thing on the uh, cruise ship as it is uh, on the plane. Cruises have become fashionable. Suppose that tomorrow uh, we have many more options, for instance, as it is to fly out to Miami and do that for the uh, fifth or sixth time for one week in the Caribbean. So the uh, logistics aspects of uh, 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 reaching the uh, ports of origin has changed in this industry. Uh, second type of uh, conclusion, um, it's about loyalty and about uh, uh, repeaters. And again, uh, you, uh, when you deal with the higher levels of the mass law hierarchy, uh, with uh, having to succeed in uh, achieving and delivering what, what you offer, uh, which is, again,